Hi, today is November 1st, Dia de las Muertes. I'm Rita Goldner, teacher, sketch artist, and a big fan of research, reading, and finding things out. So today's celebration is not scary like Halloween. It's a fun and colorful celebration of ancestors. So let's get in the mode. It's a celebration of lights, flowers, good things to eat, and skeletons. So I brought my little friend along to help celebrate Dia de los Muertos. I'm going to tell you some fun facts about this celebration, a little bit of the history, and also show you how to draw this guy. Thanks for joining. The supplies you'll need are simply a red pencil, a black pencil or black marker, and a plain sheet of paper. I'm using my photo reference to draw simple shapes like circles, rectangles, ovals in red pencil so I'll get an idea of the composition of the drawing. In this drawing I have the front facing skull up in the top in case you'd rather use that than the side facing skull that goes with the picture. I'm going to use these red pencil shapes as a guide for when I do my final drawing on a separate piece of good paper. While I'm outlining these shapes, I'm going to give you a little bit of fun facts and background on Dia de los Muertos. I know I don't pronounce it that well, but it's a celebration of life. It's a celebration about ancestors that have gone before. Some people mistakenly think that it is a Mexican version of Halloween, but it's not. It's a separate celebration that has been around for over 2,000 years. And Halloween is supposed to be scary and dark and morbid, but Dia de los Muertos is happy, colorful, flowery, and a lot of fun. They have street parties, dancing, music, and flowers. This is a national holiday in Mexico and is growing in popularity around the world thanks to the Mexican culture. As I'm finishing up the red penciled shapes on my photo reference, I'm going to take a plain piece of paper and transfer or copy all these red penciled shapes onto my regular plain piece of paper. You'll notice I don't have an eraser. I'll just keep going. And if I make a mistake or put a line where I don't want it, I'll just put another line right beside it where I do want it and ignore the one that I don't like. The line that I don't like acts as a guideline for the placement of a line that I do like. So I just keep going and if it gets confusing between the lines I like and the lines I don't like, I'll just draw a little cross through the ones I don't like, but I never erase it. That takes too much time and it's get confusing. And then also you don't have your guideline for the lines that you do like. When you're all done, you'll go back over with a black marker or a black pencil and just pick out the red lines that you like and ignore the ones that you don't like. You'll also notice that the bones both the upper and lower arm bones and the upper and lower leg bones are double bones. So when you get finished, you draw a line between the lines that you've got here to show that you've got two bones in all of those places, upper and lower arms and upper and lower legs. The joints are just a circle. That's fine to show what the joint looks like. While I'm doing this sketch, I'll tell you a few more fun facts. The Mexican people, while celebrating their holiday, usually make a little altar in their home called 
ofrenda. And that altar is to celebrate and welcome in the spirits of their ancestors. Little private homes have a small one, but sometimes in the center of town, in the public square, there's a large, very fancy ofrenda, usually made by some famous artist that lives in the town with all kinds of fancy decorations on it, and maybe they will use it to celebrate a famous person from the town that's gone. Sometimes the people will have a celebration picnic out at the cemetery or make the foods that their deceased relatives really liked and put the foods on the ofrendas. The most popular decorations are marigolds in orange and yellow and sugar skulls, which is a form of candy made in the shape of a skull and decorated very fancy and of course dancing skeletons. In a lot of the sketches and drawings people do, they put clothes on the skeletons or marigolds on top of their head just to make them more fancy. You can do that with your skeleton sketch when you've finished. I put some reference photos you can have in a link in the description of this video down below. And so you can make your own sketch with flowers on top, a colorful dress if it's a girl, or a big sombrero if it's a boy. Or you can even put two of them side by side dancing or marching in a parade. It's pretty easy to move the arms and legs around into different positions for other different skeleton drawings you might make. And you can even put them like I said, dancing or walking in a parade. I did a drawing of a boy and a girl skeleton dressed in traditional costumes and marching in a parade with other skeletons watching in the back audience. You'll see it at the end of this video. If you want to do some fun research, look up the sugar skulls on the internet and see some of the fancy decorations and paint colors they have on them and you can add a sugar skull to the top of your own drawing. Let your imagination run wild. Here's the skeleton parade I told you about and you can find a link in the description that'll give you a place to print out this picture.